So today we're going to be talking about niche and avatar and why you shouldn't be necessarily niching down on your avatar if you're working on building your business model or developing a product and service. There are times when you should definitely be niching down on your avatar, but we'll talk today about when you shouldn't and how you should go about actually building your business model and developing your products and services. But also we're gonna try and figure out, is it niche or is it niche? I only think the reason that people use the word niche is so that they can fit it in the sentence, the riches are in the niches. But hey, if niche is your thing, who am I to argue? I'll tell you what, let's sort this out once and for all. If you think it's niche, hit the like button. If you think it's niche, hit the like button. Yeah, I see the flaw in my plan, but hear me out. Hit the like button and write down, it's niche, capiche. And if it's niche, you write down, the riches are in the niches. And then I'll look at all the results and I'll comment below that it's niche. Okay, great. Glad we got that sorted. Let's get on with the video, hit it. So before we get started, I want to make it absolutely clear why sometimes I say you should be niching down on your avatar and sometimes I say you shouldn't be niching down on your avatar. There are many times you should be niching down on your avatar and most of those times are when you are doing your content marketing or your marketing or your messaging out to your particular prospect and the reason why you do that is so that you can make your message absolutely consistent and crystal clear to the person that you're trying to target who is at that potential point in time your ideal potential client. However, when you're trying to build your business model or when you're trying to develop your products or services, building a particular product or service or business model around just one person is not such a great idea considering that you want to potentially scale. I mean, I had one time I was going down the underground and I saw twins, identical twin boys that were sitting down in front of me. They were about six years old, seven years old. Everyone was saying, oh, look at them, so cute. But the point is they were looking at a magazine and they were looking at mobile phones. And one of them looked at it and, and he showed it to his brother and he was like, wow, look at this, it's so cool. And his twin brother, identical genetically, looked back at him and said, oh, that's horrible. Now here we have two identical twins, completely genetically the same, growing up in exactly the same conditions and environment and so on and so forth. And both of them have completely opposing ideas. So if you're trying to build a particular product or a service around just one person, you're limiting yourself. And what you should be doing is you should be trying to build it around a target market and a target audience. And we'll talk about how we're gonna break this down throughout the rest of this video. So how many times have you heard this? You go away and you try and build a business and someone says to you, make sure you pick a niche and pick an avatar and call her Amy or Brad or Bob or whatever. Let's say it's Amy in this case. And then they say, all right, go and find out everything there is to know about Amy. And you go away and you say, all right, Amy is an amazing 27 year old female who loves living her true, unique, authentic life. And you find out she has a three legged cat and she, you know, all of these things. Let's not get into detail, but you get my point. And then you go and you develop a product or a service for Amy specifically. And then you basically go and sell it to Amy because most likely, most of the time, it's someone that you either know that you build this avatar around or yourself. So bear in mind that actually when you want to validate whether or not a business works, selling it to one person really doesn't validate your business. They say that depending on the product or the service, you need at least three or five or 10 or even more times that you've actually sold this to a paying client before you can come back and you say, I have validated my business model and it works. Now let me go and scale it. So selling it to one person and selling it to one avatar doesn't make sense and doesn't make business sense. So once we've identified the need, the next thing to do is to start looking at the target market. And the target market can be classified under four kind of brackets, categories, things, whatever you wanna call them. They're four things. 
These four things are the demographics, where you start looking at age and gender, so on and so forth, the geographic location, where you're looking at whether it's going to be local or regional or international. You're also looking at behavioral in terms of whether they bought from you before or whether they bought a similar product before or a service. How do they behave and under what conditions? And finally, you look at the psychographic element, which looks at that particular target market's values, their brand loyalty, culture, so on and so forth. Once you've identified a particular target market, then you can start segmenting it and slicing and dicing it and using different particular groups within them. So you can, for example, look at female between 25 and 35 or male males between 45 and 65. Again, it doesn't matter what it is, but you can break it down and it doesn't just necessarily need to be from a demographic perspective. It's a combination of all of the four categories we've just spoken about. Once you've identified different target market segments, then you should pick one and work with that. And as you scale and grow, you can expand and go into different segments. The iPad is a classic example. You've got um, use cases for um, artists, you've got use cases for teenagers, you've got use cases for grandparents, you've got use cases for medical students and medical um, organizations and so on and so forth. And the messaging for those people will be different for each one of them. Now, I'm not asking you to be like Apple. They are at a much, much further stage. But you understand what I'm trying to say in terms of start with one, but understand that it has the capacity to go into different segments. Once you've identified a particular segment, then you can start breaking it down further and looking at the avatar or the persona. But before we do that, we need to try and identify what the size of each segment is, how unique you're going to be in that particular segment, and how easy it is going to be that you can access that segment. So we're looking at size, uniqueness, and accessibility. And these are measures that you're looking at to understand Am I going to be competitive? Am I going to be able to access these clients? And is the size sufficient enough for me to go into this segment and be able to make some money and be able to obviously serve? So once you've identified a segment that works for you and then you go down to your personas or your avatars, this is where you start looking at Bob and Mary and Amy and Brad and Sue. And in the past, what happens is for each product, it will have different types of avatars. And it's not just in the past, even now it's used until today. For example, in the tech world where they look at a particular one product and then they'll break down user journeys for each one of these people and how they would use it and they would map it across. And they would say, Amy would use the iPhone or whatever product in this particular way. And Brad would use it in this particular way. And Josh would use it in this particular way. And they need to try and understand the user journey so that A, they design a great user experience, but B, they can also provide the right messaging to that ideal client. In your case, when you're picking one particular avatar, that's your ideal client. And that's the person that you say, right, I need to understand everything there is to know about this particular person. And I need to get into their inner thoughts. I need to understand their fears. And I need to be able to find out how I'm going to alleviate those fears and what value it brings to them. And we're going to be talking about how you price that value in a future video. So make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can keep informed with any new videos as they come out weekly. So once you've identified your avatar and your niche, that's where your content messaging and your content marketing and all of your marketing, everything needs to be crystal clear for that one person. And that's what's going to make you consistent in the market. It will also give you a lot of focus so that you're not trying to serve all of these different people at different times. And once you're able to scale, then you can start adding extra avatars and then you can start adding extra segments and then you can start adding extra target markets and extra products and so on and so forth. So you, you work your way bottom up, but very, very 
essential is that you start your whole process and your mindset needs to be top down to understand how that works. Another example, Facebook. I know I'm giving you big companies, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you that even the largest companies started incredibly small. When Facebook first started out, they started out literally when they said, we are only doing this as a platform internally for Harvard University students. And then after that, it started branching out into only other students and then it started branching out into particular regions. Now everybody uses it. And the messaging was very clear at the time. It was only for specific students internally. So again, I'm not telling you, you need to market to everyone now. You do need to niche down on your avatar and you do need to make sure that your messaging is crystal clear. But that's not the way that you start building your business model and that's not how we go about it. But another thing you should be aware of are stakeholders. And these are people that you should very much be aware of from day one in your business. And they are people or stakeholders that have a direct or indirect effect or impact on the decision making process for your product or service, even though they might not be the client directly. What do I mean by that? Let's take, for example, a small coaching business. So you might have an ideal client, an avatar that you've defined and you've identified, you know their fears, you know their inner, um, the value that you're providing, you're gonna do all of that. They say, great, we're gonna go ahead with it. And then they go and speak to their spouse and their spouse says no. And these people, the spouse in this case, is a stakeholder and you need to understand what kind of objections they're going to have so that you can provide that messaging for your avatar so that they can do the objection handling for you. So for example, several years back, I was consulting a large organization and they had several branches and they had a contract with Lenovo for all of their laptops. Lenovo considered these people and this organization as a big client. So the maintenance department complained and they basically said that the, these laptops are hard to repair, they're impossible to find parts for, all of these kind of things. Uh, we don't think that it's a great idea. We love Dell. We've heard so many good things about Dell. And what happened at the end of the contract was that the organization canceled the contract with Lenovo and started a new contract with Dell laptops. So even though that the maintenance department had zero involvement in actually the buying process, they were an, actually in this case a direct impact in terms of the decision making process. They had a direct impact on who and what kind of laptops they should buy and go for. So in this case, the maintenance department here was a stakeholder. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about what kind of stakeholders you may have for your business for your product or service that you haven't really thought about yet that can have an impact on your business or your client or potential client and how they would do that and what kind of objections they would have so that you can develop the right messaging for them. Write in the comments below if you found any different stakeholders that you hadn't considered before. I'm going to actually be talking about stakeholders for my case as growing this YouTube channel and this video up here and I'm going to be covering YouTube as one of my stakeholders because I consider them that they're going to have an impact on my ability to grow this YouTube channel and potentially make money in the future. If you're interested, please watch this video, not before you finish this video though. Make sure you finish this video and then watch this video. I'm gonna link it at the bottom in the, in, in the notes. So before you say to me, wait, hang on a minute, Tammy, you're giving me large organizations, different examples. You're giving me all of these like customer segments, target markets, all of this, and you're just confusing me. I'm just a small online business. I'm a solopreneur or I'm a coaching business and I just, does this apply to me? Absolutely, it does. Yes, you should still be niching down on one avatar and one niche in your market so that your content messaging and your marketing can be crystal clear and consistent. However, you do not develop a business model or a product or a service around just one avatar or one person. You work top down, not the other way around, so that when you are able to grow later on, you've got the breathing space and the knowledge that you have a market size large enough that you can still grow into and scale into. So you work up from the top, the need, then you look at your target market and break it down in terms of the different segmentation, whether you wanna look at the demographics, whether you wanna say 45 to 65 year old females or 25 to 35 year old males, whatever it is, you look at them and you say, 
Do they go to conferences? Can I can I target them there? What kind of values do they have? What kind of businesses do they run? All of these things you still go and develop and understand the size and the accessibility and the uniqueness of your prospect. But all of these things come top down, not the other way around. But also one other thing you need to focus on is your stakeholder and you need to understand how your stakeholders are going to impact the decision making process of your avatar. And that is from day one of your business. So I hope that's been useful for you. Please write down in the comments below what value you found from this video, but also what stakeholders that you hadn't necessarily been thinking about that have an impact on your business that now have an impact on your business, or at least you now know they have an impact on your business, and what kind of messaging you'll be providing to your avatar so that they can do the objection handling for you. Please hit the like button, please hit the subscribe thingy, please hit the notification bell, anything else you can hit, just hit it, and I'll see you next time. Thank you over and out. So make sure that you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell and put in the comments below what value that you've been able to find out of this video because obviously it's been valuable, I hope. Sorry, what? I can't say that. I should let them decide. Let them decide it's valuable. But it is value, isn't it? I mean, come on, it's value. It's value, isn't it? I mean, it's value. I can't say that. You should, that's arrogant. Let them just I'm learning. I'm try, trying to learn how to grow a YouTube channel. It's early days for me You know, please be a little bit patient. I need to decide how to say these things at the end You know the sign offs and stuff. Is it like comment below? Make sure it's valuable If it's not valuable just say so if it's valuable say so if it's not valuable and it's if It's halfway between then just say so Do what you want, comment below, say what you want. I'll respond back, promise. I will, promise. All right, let's deal, check on it. All right, see you later, next video.